welcome back to my channel once again this is absolute gh if you are a new subscriber welcome if you haven't subscribed please do because there are a lot of things to show you and thank you to all those who have been calling me when i am not able to post video for some time i really really appreciate it i have a big family here auntie justine hey anytime she does not see me for see my video for about a week or two she will just make a call why are you not posting now thank you mommy i really appreciate it and to all those who have been asking me why i've not been posting a video today i'm going to make calendula soup if you need anything my contact will be on the screen so you can call me or whatsapp so this is the calendula i'm talking about we have the mauve color and then the blue color i'm using the yellow color to make it i got mine from Shoprite. there's a store there that i got it from so let's start with the preparation some people just start watching the video and they stop you now the measurement and the rest will come as i use them so please watch the video to the end so that you know the measurement before you call or you whatsapp and call and say that there's no measurement of this there's no measurement of on that this is calendula it's dried one one i think one kg was 25 cities i blended it into powdered and i'm going to use the whole powder for the soup I have my coconut oil, my shea butter, and then cocoa butter in the cup. I have my glycerin, silicate too, I have it. And I also have my uh, perfume. I poured it into a Gemma Plus container. That's why you can see Gemma Plus, but it's my perfume. We don't, you know, we don't use, uh, we don't use preservative for soups and i also have my live solution so now this is the preparation first i poured in my blended calendula powder into my live solution already prepared live solution and then stirred. there are so many ways you can do this method you can either infuse it with your oil for about a day or two and then sieve or you can infuse it with water and then use the water for your lye or you can pour it directly into your lye solution like i'm doing there so after pouring it into my lye solution i stirred very well to make sure that it is well mixed please my number will be on the screen if you need me you can just contact me you can also email me for more information After stirring it for some time, I just set it aside and then went ahead to melt my butters. That is my shea butter, cocoa butter, and I I put it in a microwave. So whilst it was melting, I was just stirring my calendula with my lye. So after mixing, I then poured into my container. The container that I'm going to prepare the soup in. Now in that case, I'm using a cup. I always try to sieve my oils and butters and even my lye because most of the time there are some few particles you can find in those things and I don't want them to get into my soup. And even before I poured in my calendula into my lye solution, I made sure that I sieve the lye first before pouring in the calendula powder. So as you can see me doing, I also added some a little uh, steric acid into my butters and then melt the steric acid will help with the thickening of the soup it's really really important as time goes on i will show you how it is done i then went ahead to pour in my glycerin and then the silicate and then mist please watch the video today because the benefit of calendula to the skin will follow later after the preparation of the whole thing. So after adding my silicate glycerin, 
and then my perfume i then stitch very well make sure it is well mixed please when you are making soap don't be lazy with stirring otherwise you will end up getting some uneven texture i will also be answering some of the most asked questions on soaps so just stay tuned and watch the video to the end so that you don't come back to ask me the same question that i've already answered in my during my preparations in the new year is similar as i'm saying is similar no friend calendula and i'm very good or your flower will be or your common pants it will be fear able to need to be a it's you know after checking the temperatures i just check the temperature make sure they are almost equal or they are near equal or equal temperatures that is your life solution and then your oils are equal or near equal it really helps after checking the temperatures i then put in my life solution to the oil and then stitch because i use palm uh, coconut oil and then share butter and then cocoa butter it tasted very fast so i had to be fast with the stirring of the whole thing as you can see me doing in the video like when you are making so please don't be lazy with the stirring like i always say you have to stir and make sure that the oil incorporates well with the line otherwise you might end up having a separation of the soup you might see lie beneath it and the oil on top of it which is no good for making soups so after hand blended it for some time for it to taste i then went ahead to pour it into my soup mold so to the benefit of calendula to the skin it is often used as a complementary or alternative treatment it also improves the quality and appearance of skin it helps to heal wounds fast it contains cells regenerative properties it's great for dry and damaged skin it suits rashes and soreness it minimizes scar formation it is good for eczema it promotes skin tissue repair it's anti-inflammatory it's antiseptic and antibacterial so it's the list goes on and on and on i can't mention all but it has a whole lot of health benefits to the skin like it can be used to treat ringworm it moistens and soothes dry and cracked skin it is also antifungal there's a question i normally get which i want to address here why soap is cured for six weeks or four weeks before it can be used when you cure soap for four resources depending on the formula you use it will reduce the amount of water in the soap during this time fats water and light turn into soap the longer it sits the harder and milder it will become Non-cured soaps dries the body and leaves the skin feeling tight and sometimes irritated. So it's always important to make sure that your soap is cured enough before you use it. Otherwise, you it will cause harm to your skin. Another question is, how can you store your soap? Soaps should be stored in a cool, dry and well-ventilated space. It shouldn't be in an enclosed place where there wouldn't be any air, but it should be at a place where it will be dry and there wouldn't be any moisture in the room or at the place where the soap is. Otherwise, there will be soap, there will be orange spots on the soap, which will not spoil the soap dough, but it wouldn't make it look that attractive as expected. Thank you for watching my video and stay tuned because there are more where this came from.